There's, there's three main points uh, that we're trying to, to get across to people. Um, comparability, ability to pay, and reputation. If we accepted the administration's office offer, by the end of the next contract, we would be 20% behind in terms of salary. Now, it's, it's not a question of us uh, you know, wanting the extra money so we can all put decks on our houses or anything like that. It's a question of our ability here at UNB to, to attract and to keep people um, of the caliber that, uh, that we want to attract and keep. I mean, if you were a, a young hotshot coming out of your PhD program and were offered two jobs and one was at 20% less, uh, all other things being equal, what would you do? Of course you would, you would uh, go with the higher paid job. And um, we're, we're finding, some departments are finding real difficulty hiring people and, or, or we hire people and they leave. The administration constantly tells us that comparability is important when it comes to administrative salaries. Uh, you may remember there was a bit of a, a scandal a little while ago about uh, the size of our president's salary. Uh, we were told by the uh, administration that that's, you need to pay a comparable wage to attract somebody. Uh, they, said, they said that flat out about the president and yet they don't seem to accept that argument uh, for faculty. And uh, the fact is faculty are drawn from across the country just like administration are. Uh, it's not a local hiring pool. They can't take advantage of the depressed uh, economy in New Brunswick and, and pay less. Uh, if, if we want to build this institution, we need to have comparable wages. You know, we, we hear a lot from our administration about how they don't have any money, and certainly when they present us uh, with their budgets, it seems uh, pretty close to the bone. There doesn't seem to be a lot of wiggle room. Uh, they'd like to pay us, so sorry, but they can't. Uh, but uh, we've been looking into it, and uh, the fact of the matter is that they have a lot of discretion, and they're using that discretion uh, when they, when they uh, build their budgets, and they're they're making choices about what they want to spend money on. Uh, in the last 10 years, we've lost 48 academic positions uh, across both campuses. That's a big hit to take when your, mem your, your numbers are, you know, sort of 600 or so. I mean, we're talking, you know, 7 or 8 percent loss of, of positions in the last 10 years. And in that same period, uh, there's been an, an addition of 84 non-academic positions. So it's very clear um, that there is money. The argument that there isn't money doesn't fly. It's a question of what that money is being spent on and the choices that uh, the administration is making and they're not choosing to bolster uh, the academic uh, core mission of the university. Um, we all came here uh, to teach at a comprehensive university. Uh, a big provincial university and uh, that reputation is being eroded and it's it's not just a question of um, status you know it's it's a question of the very character of this institution are we going to be able to offer the standard of education that we should be able to offer to our students uh, people say this is a have-not province we are, we're so used to doing uh, making do with less here and we're saying that our students, that the youth of this province, should not have to make do with less when it comes to their education. If, if this is a have-not province, if we're trying to keep our youth here, if we're trying to prevent that outflow, uh, we need to start with the education system. We need to have a strong education system here with a flagship comprehensive provincial university at UNB and give students something to, to, to stay here for. So it's, it's not just a question, as I said, of status. It's a question of what the youth of this province, what the people of this province deserve. They deserve to have a comprehensive university in their province uh, to, help, to help this province grow.